There's actually not a ton of sociology on the MCAT, and I'm pretty sure that I can cover all of it in like 10 minutes, which I'm going to try to do. Most of the stuff that you're going to get tested on for sociology is like really easy stuff that you can just intuit, in-group, out-group, stuff that kind of has like psychological ties to it. But there are six theories that I like for all of my students to know about. I'm going to introduce you to them now, give you an example so that they stick, and then whenever you take your real MCAT, you're going to have earned a couple of free points just by watching this video. Now, if you've taken a practice MCAT, then you have definitely seen these words, and you've thought to yourself, those aren't real words. They're real words, and I'm going to tell you what they mean, so let's go to the whiteboard, and I'll show you exactly how to memorize these. So the first sociological theory that you're going to have to have memorized is called functionalism. And all of these theories are explaining how sociologists view society and different pieces of society and how they fit together. So they're just different attempts at explaining the same thing. Now the MCAT will give you a sociologist's view of something or maybe an individual's view of society and say that they view society in X, Y, and Z. And then the answer choices will be four sociological theories and they'll say which of these theories is most in line with the individual's view. So that's how it's going to be tested. Um, so you need to be familiar with them. The first one is called functionalism. Now this one's pretty easy to remember. It's the idea that every individual and part of society plays a functional role. So let's take an example that I use in our high yield book and that is let's say we have a bank. Well the bank loans us money so that we can go to med school and that we can become a doctor and save lives, right? Well we save the lives of the people at the bank. So the bank gives us money so that we can go and become doctors and that serves a functional purpose to help us get what we want, but then our functional purpose is that we can save their lives, make their lives and their loved ones' lives a little bit easier. So we're all playing a functional role in society. That's it, that's functionalism. The second theory is something called conflict theory, and this is the one that I probably had the most trouble memorizing whenever I was a student. Um, it is actually based off of some ideas from Karl Marx. Conflict theory sees society as a competition between different groups, and it likes to focus heavily on the inequality between those different groups. And they're not always um, like, like racial or ethnic groups like we kind of classically think of. These can be different groups like um, strat stratification, maybe the caste system is a way that I've seen it tested. So there's some key words that you need to focus on with conflict theory. Those key words are going to be words like competition, power, struggle, because you are struggling in a conflict, and then of course sometimes they'll use the word conflict, but honestly that's probably not going to pop up. But it's something that's good to be aware of. So just view it as competition between groups. So if you can easily identify a group and you can easily identify like an inequality, that's another good keyword. You can easily identify a group and inequality between the two groups and talking about how maybe one portion of society benefits from that, then that's going to be conflict theory. So if you'll notice, conflict theory focuses a little bit more on the relationships between different groups, whereas something like functionalism, its keyword's going to be bigger. It's going to be talking about like institutions or something like that, or maybe even like full career paths. So almost like this exchange of functional goods. So that's functionalism and that's conflict theory. The next one we're going to talk about is something called social constructionism. So now we're starting to get to words that sound a little bit more made up. And whenever I tell you my definition of it, you're going to think that I'm lying. Social constructionism claims that intangible things like knowledge, experiences, even words aren't real. Like they don't carry any um, wait, they're not something that's actually real, but they have meaning because we as a society have agreed to give them meaning. So we, the way I remember this one, is that we as a society have constructed meaning. And a good way to remember this is the whole idea of a social construct. This is something that we've heard a bunch, but a social construct is exactly what social constructionism is getting at. It's something that we as a society have agreed to give a meaning to one specific thing. It may not actually have that meaning, but we as a society have agreed to give that one thing, whether it be a word or a term or maybe a big red octagon, we've given that a specific meaning. 
If you see a big red octagon anywhere, it's like your foot's just gonna naturally slam on the brake. My favorite example of this is that a dog is a pet, but a wolf is not a pet. And sometimes people keep wolves as pets, and they're weird. But a dog, that's completely normal. Some people let it in their beds, that's fine. I don't judge you a lot, I wouldn't tell you. But if you have a wolf in your bed, that's probably cooler. But still, that's a good example of dog equals pet, wolf, wolf is not a pet. Wolves will kill you. Now, what that means is that society has constructed what can be a pet and what cannot be a pet. Because I bet most of you agree that if somebody's walking around with a dog on a leash, that's completely fine. But if they have like a rhinoceros on a leash, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna go to the hospital. So that's social constructionism. The next one that we're gonna get to um, is called the social exchange theory. And it sounds kind of similar because it uses one of the same words, but it is slightly different. And being able to notice the nuances in these is what helped you get the questions correct because that's what they're asking. They're asking what is the nuance between these two theories. So you do have to know the nuance. So this is sometimes just called the exchange theory, um, but the MCAT actually uses both, and it kind of helps you to remember it because the social exchange theory is the idea that people form relationships with each other with the intent to maximize benefits for themselves and minimize risks for themselves. So we're gonna say maximize benefits, minimize risks. So the purpose of relationship in the social exchange theory is to help yourself. It's really easy to think about this in the terms of dating. So for example, you get in a relationship and what that partner offers you in the form of like love or support is what that partner offers you in the form of like love or support or fun is worth the cost of being taken socially. You know, whether that be like just not being able to frolic around as you youngins do or um, maybe losing like 10 pounds of muscle when you got married. But it's worth it, right? Um, and a funny story, whenever we were writing this book, Maggie and I, we split chapters up. One of us would write it and then us and one other person would um, proofread. So we had, we had three tutors proofreading these documents. And whenever I wrote this chapter, I actually used the idea of dating um, as an example for social exchange theory. And I talked about that what I could provide somebody was worth the cost of being taken socially. And my examples for what I could provide were things like money, status, prestige. And Maggie was like, are you, are you okay? What about things like love and comfort? So that's all fine and dandy, but another good way to look at social exchange theory is with money. So I will invest $500 if I know that I will get $550 back, right? I will exchange $500 for you to have right now if you can tell me that in two weeks you'll give me $550 back. So another good way to look at social exchange theory is as investing. And they probably won't test you with this, but it kind of helps it to stick a little bit. The fifth is called the rational choice theory. And this is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It states that every decision that is made is rational to the person that's making the decision. And that's why society makes decisions is because it's rational to the person making that decision. Now, to drive that home, let's say we have two people. They're both students studying for the MCAT and they both want to go to medical school. Now, one person is deciding, hey, my family has a lot of money. I'm just going to go ahead and get like one of those MCAT courses. They cost like $3,000 and yeah, that's a lot of money, but then I will be in medical school and I will be happy. Well, that's a rational choice to them. And maybe another person says, hey, I have $3,000 to my name if I ask somebody for $3,000. And so I'm going to try to do something that's as cheap as possible. And maybe they just go to YouTube and they look up IFD and then they follow what we say. Maybe they, maybe they score even higher. Who knows? Maybe they score even higher. But regardless, they get into medical school too, and they're still happy. Now, if you ask both of these people, was your decision rational, they're both going to say yes. Individual A is going to say, well, I knew that I needed help. I thought I would go to some professionals that have done it before. And individual B is going to say, well, these people look like they were pretty solid. I mean, I, they say that they used to work for professional companies, which we did. And I've heard that their high yield guide is funny and awesome and short. And so I'm, I'm gonna use that to prep. And it is. So that's a rational choice for both parties. 
and that is the rational choice theory. So some keywords for rational choice obviously are going to be things like rational. If they use quotations, it'll, it'll say something like this makes sense for me or something like that. And a lot of this will focus on the individual making the decision. And that's something that's going to be kind of helpful as you go back and forth. You need to go through these and figure out which one of these is going to be the individual making a decision versus a large group making a decision. So it's your exchange, rational choice. They're the individuals making a decision. But something like functionalism, that is like a macro sociological view is what it's called. You're looking at society as a whole rather than the relationships and the interactions that makes a society a thing. So society. Now symbolic interactionism, this is one that you might get tripped up with the social constructionism theory. Now when you're focusing on this one, I just want you to remember it by the word symbols. They're going to have to give you symbols and they may not say the word symbols, but they'll give you something like letters or numbers or maybe they'll give you like one specific sound or maybe a type of picture. Now the reason that this one could be confusing is that, so the actual definition of symbolic inter interactionism is this idea that your experiences give meaning to symbols. Now that kind of sounds a little bit like social constructionism, right? To help you remember it, try to, try to think about the, the debate between um, like, like biological sex and gender. People say that gender is a social construct. People don't say that gender is a symbol, right? So what would be a good example of a symbol? So let's think about if you're driving in a foreign country and you see some kind of light that's hanging and it looks like this right here, okay? And these lights light up different colors. If you see the red one, what are you gonna do? You're gonna stop. If you see the green one, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go, right? Because these colors in this order to us, that tells us something. And it doesn't just stop whenever you're driving. I mean, there's plenty of like kindergarten classes that use this very setup. They'll have like green means you can go to the bathroom or something like that. So we use the symbol of like a green circle as go or a red circle as don't go or a red octagon as stop. Those symbols mean something to us. And really the, the, the easiest way to, to think about this is like written language. Right. I mean, ha have you, is it not insane that like a W means something to you? Like this is just a drawing. This is just a scribble on, on an iPad. But symbolic interactionism is an attempt to convey to you that whenever I put these sketches next to each other, you know what they mean. Whenever I put these letters together that seemingly mean nothing, you know that this is talking about a YouTube channel. So that's what symbolic interactionism is. That is the six sociological theories. And where I'm pulling this information from is from our high yield guide. Our high yield guide is something that I think can help every single student, whether they're beginning studying or they're about to take their tests. It's a great way to learn all the high yield sciences before you start your studying so that you can make sure that while you're going through all the sciences, you know the ones to focus on specifically. And that is really gonna help you as a student. And it's also a really solid way for you to just sit down and read over all the high yield sciences explained by just a couple med students that did really well in their MCAT, have tutored for a couple years, how these sciences are tested and they're boiled down simply. We don't include fluff and it's less than 100 pages. So we have a lot of students that are just reading it the night before they take a practice exam and go up a few points every single time. The link for that document is in the description as well as the link for our math guide and our Discord channel if you want to study with us. We obviously appreciate all the support and it allows us to keep making these videos during medical school. But if you're looking for a zero cost way to support us, just like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with a friend or an advisor. We are making videos for all the topics in the High Yield book series. So if you, if you can't afford the book, then that's completely fine. You're still going to get the information. But if you want a written form and you want it now, it's available. First link in the description. Thanks for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one.